Hello there. It's very easy to get fed up at this time of year, um, so we're going to make some tomato soup to cheer us up. Um, I've got various forms of tomato here. I've got an actual tomato. I've got tins of tomato. And I've got jars of this passata stuff, which is just tomato. Probably a few herbs and things added. It's just tomato in various forms. In theory, you could just take one of these jars, stick it in a pot, heat it up a wee bit. Tomato soup. But we want to add a few things just to kind of bring it to a different level, where there's a kind of really tasty background thing going on. Um, and how, how we do that is going to be revealed shortly. Just get a big soup pot, a little bit of oil, uh, an onion chopped up as fine as you can without cutting your fingers off. But we're just going to soften that a bit. And that's the first part of the process. Um, there's various things I've got that I think will kind of uh, add to the flavour. I've got these um, these things, red peppers, they're long instead of short, I'm not sure how that is. These are of course technical terms when you're making soup, long and short. But these are long peppers, yeah, red peppers. Red peppers goes well with tomato there. And I think for your making soup, it's very much an experimental process because I mean, I've not actually made this before. I'm kind of feeling my way through this and hoping that it all kind of works out in the end. When you're making soup, you can do that. It doesn't always work out, but invariably you, you, you learn from any mistakes that you made, or that you make rather. I've also got um, chorizo or chorizo. Uh, which I'll cut up into small pieces and that's going to go in there as well and uh, we'll do that right now ok so this onion's kind of softened up all we're really doing here is getting rid of a lot of the water that's in the onion and bringing out any flavour that they might have <coughs> I've taken skin off the chorizo or the chorizo, I don't know how you pronounce that word, uh, so it's easier to cut up. I, ideally, I think it might be better to have cut this into smaller bits, but it's actually quite difficult doing that. So we'll just leave it like that and we'll see how we go. Um, before doing that, I just want to add something else. I just want to add a, a hint of chilli powder. I mean, the amount that you add <coughs> is up to you. If you want soup that blows your head off and makes your bottom nippy, then by all means add lots of chilli. But um, I don't really want a soup that's too kind of hot or spicy. I'm also adding a wee bit of turmeric powder. I mean that kind of adds colour, you don't really need colour to tomato soup, but it will kind of add a slight earthy kind of background flavour I think. And um, I smoke paprika, quite a bit of this actually I think. There will be quite a lot of paprika in the chorizo, which I think will come out once we start to, to cook that, or heat it up rather. A wee bit of chopped garlic here, and we'll just get that chorizo in a, in a pot. So, oh, obviously it's not a vegetarian dish, you can make tomato soup that is vegetarian, just without cream, don't find some other way of adding the flavour, maybe some mushrooms or something, I don't know. You could do what you want, homemade soup, choice is yours. So I'm now doing stuff. 
Um, I've, I've never used these long um, peppers. I don't know whether to take the seeds out or not. I suspect the seeds might sort of get in the way, you know. Um, Yeah, I think there's a little kind of bundle of seeds there. I think we'll just not add them. I think that could um, be an unnecessary complication. Yeah, we don't want that. Um, and I think like the chorizo, we'll just cut this up using scissors. Sometimes sharp scissors are just as easy to cut things up than a knife. Um, so we'll get down to that. And so, sometimes at this time of year you might not be able to figure out why it is that you feel a bit fed up. But I'm long enough in a tooth to know that it is because of the time of year. And within a couple of weeks, when the weather starts to get really very uh, atmospheric with kind of early morning mist and frost and all the orange leaves of autumn, you suddenly think it's actually not too bad, you know. It, it, initially, just as kind of um, this time of year approaches, you, you just suddenly find yourself feeling a bit doom and gloomy. But once you realise what's causing it, you invariably start to feel a bit better. And it's not going to be that long before um, we reach the turn of the year. I mean, I, I find myself drinking too much beer at this time of year, and it's just, it's part of the, the seasonal kind of thing that's got on. I leave the house, I got the town, and I think I can't figure out what to do with myself. I'll just go to the pub. And spending the good part of a day in a pub and ending up drinking nine pints and even ten pints of beer, it's not good for anybody. It certainly doesn't help. I think that's why at this time of year you often see stronger beers, strong winter beers, because I think it's generally accepted that this is a difficult time of year to get through. I think as animals we sort of, um, there's probably some genes within us that uh, want to hibernate. We don't want to continue going to work and stuff. We just want to crawl into a corner and Wait until the spring. Okay, that's the peppers in. I'm already having doubts about this soup because it all looks very lumpy. I'm obviously going to blitz it with a blitzer. But I'm not sure how well that will cope with the chorizo and stuff. Um, okay, cut up the real tomato. I recently closed down my Twitter account. I've had a number of Twitter accounts and I've closed them all down because I've been pretty um, embarrassed perhaps, ashamed even of some of the stuff I've said on there. Um, and it's invariably after a few beers. It's not an excuse really, maybe a few beers just loosens the tongue and makes you say things you actually do think. But, you know, I, 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 too many beers and then go on to Twitter, I seem to turn into some sort of demonic buffoon. It's just, it's, it's a platform that you, you, you see a lot of people using bad language and I suspect a lot of people say things on there that they wouldn't otherwise say. And somebody made a comment in, in my YouTube channel saying that they'd seen my Twitter feed and um, it obviously it shocked them so much that um, they unsubscribed to the YouTube channel. And that kind of upset me a bit, you know. So I just shut the whole thing down. 
as I say, the poor man probably got the fright of his life to discover that cuddly old Ed's actually a drunken racist. To be honest, I think we're all racists. There's, there's, there's an animal instinct within us all that kind of makes us very wary of anything that is different. Now we'll put the tomato, the real tomato in there. Give that a good stir. Rather than a smooth tomato soup, this is just very lumpy. I don't know how this is going to go. But as I say, I think it's just an animal instinct to be wary of just anything that stands out and is different. And as human beings, uh, we hope to rise above these animal instincts. But unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. And if you, if you just think about the general situation, um, where, where anything different sort of stands out, it can be a source of um, attention to be picked on. Uh, if you think about people with ginger hair, for example, they're different. The amount of flack they get sometimes is just unbelievable. And I think, if, if you look at school kids as another example, uh, if you just stop one day, look at school kids on their way to school, they are almost all dressed in black. Black trousers, black jackets and so on and so forth. Very few of them are brave enough to wear anything with a bit of colour to it. Um, because they would then stand out and be, be, be uh, potentially picked on. They're different. It's just human nature, and I'm afraid, as I say, we try to rise above it. Sorry, it's not human nature, it's animal nature. We try to rise above it, but sometimes we can't, and it rears its ugly head in society. Anyway, all these kind of lumpy bits are in there. That's another technical term. And we'll just start to add liquid here. Get in there, you brute. This is one of these uh, glass uh, bottles that you feel as if there could be a bit of wastage here. Some of that's going to cling to the inside of the bottle. And the way around that is to add a wee bit of water. Ideally, I mean, I'm going to make this cream of tomato soup, so ideally I should probably have added some milk to the, the bottle. I don't have milk. Anyway, that's kind of... Get some of that stuff out. We don't want to waste anything. On Twitter, it just seems to create a kind of atmosphere where people start abusing other people. And I kind of started to find myself doing the exact same thing. It's just it's pretty disgraceful behaviour sometimes. And people using the sort of language that you very rarely see, you know. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm glad I've closed the account down. I can't be doing with it. Just a failure on my part and not kind of be able to deal with it, to be honest. Um, sometimes that's just the way it goes. Right, we'll add these tins. What I've also got is um, chopped garlic, um, which is really good stuff. Uh, it adds a really good flavour. It's a kind of uh, really strong garlicky flavour. I've got a, a couple of drops of Valian Perns left in my bottle here. We'll add some of that as well. And then we'll start to heat this up. And there's one other thing, of course, that I need to add. I'm just going to kind of roughly chop some of these bigger bits of tomato that come out of the tins there. Uh, the blitzer should, I hope, deal with a lot of that. It's, I think it's the chorizo that the, the blitzer will struggle with. Um, maybe I should have used um, tins of chopped tomatoes. 
But at least it's red, you know. If at this stage your tomato soup isn't red, then you're in big trouble. Right, um, okay. Now, basically most of what I need is in here. We're just kind of gently going to heat this up, bring it to the boil and simmer it for a while so that it all kind of starts to blend together and work itself together in some magical way. Plastic. Isn't plastic a bit of a pain sometimes? Come out of your brute. How on earth are you supposed to get this open? <laughs> For God's sake. It's supposed to be a wee perforated bit, but I can't see where it is. We might have to miss out the garlic here. Can't fully or open the jar. Alright. Zars a wee bit wants to hang on. There we are. My God. Um. Uh, the amount of this that you add is entirely up to you. I quite like this. Oh, beautiful. Right. I'm going to add. Um, don't want to add too much. If you add too much, it actually starts to impart a flavour that's more garlic than anything. A few drops of this lean pearls. I've only got a few drops, it's, it's done. Just a tiny bit of soy sauce. And of course cream, because we're making cream of tomato soup. And at some point we're also going to add some salt. And at that stage you just kind of uh, add as much salt as you think it needs. Flavour wise. Because there will be quite a bit of salt already in some of these jars and things. Is that heating up? Yeah, that's right. And I'll be honest and say I'm not sure at what stage I should be adding the cream, but at the end of the day, you know, even uh, after a few days and we're reheating it, it is going to be boiled um, uh, to improve keeping quality and so on and so forth. So I, I don't really, um, I don't really see anything wrong in adding the, uh, the cream now. Okay, so apart from uh, salt, at some point, that's essentially it. Uh, but once this is heated up and brought to the boil and simmered for, I, I really don't know, 10 minutes or from, you know, there's nothing in here that needs to be cooked. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll then deploy the blitzer, which always scares the heck out of me. It's a scary thing. And adding that cream's made it look like cream of tomato soup. It's lightened the colour. Okay, it's heating up here. I, I think I'm going to use the blitzer now. Um, and then we'll, once it's kind of um, smoothed out a bit, we'll see how much salt we need. To 
be honest, I don't think the Blitz are going to be able to cope with the chorizo that's in here. So we might end up with a lumpy tomato soup. What the heck? Right, is that going to start boiling there? Right, okay, I'll, oh, I'll turn it down a little bit just for that moment. Okay, this is a blitzer, fairly cheap and inexpensive thing. You've got sharp blades whirling around at a tremendous speed. If anything were to fail or break during this procedure, um, I could be in big trouble. I'm just scared of it, you know. I should maybe get somebody in to do this bit. Or have some sort of gadget that allows me to do this while I'm not in the room. Behind a door or something, behind some sort of shelter. Anyway, let's see. Let's see what harms. <laughs> I'm just going to do this first of all. It's not going to break down the chorizo. We're, we're making lumpy tomato soup. I did tell you that, didn't I? Lumpy tomato soup. Yeah. One lump or two. Okay, so we're not going to be able to get rid of these lumps. Um, the next stage is to, once this has been brought to the boil, I mean it can be simmered for probably just five minutes, as I say, there's nothing in here that needs cooking, it's all sort of ready to go. But let's just have a wee taste. Um, before we add the salt, see what we've got. It certainly looks the part. Excuse me, sir. There's lumps on my soup. Yeah. And right, let's see what we've got here. Definitely needs salt. It's tomato wee but I mean you know what tomatoes are like. I'd expect of where these tomatoes came from, tins, jars, fresh. You get good tomatoes and you get tomatoes that aren't very good. You know, some tomatoes that are just very, very tasty just on their own. And some that are just kind of watery and utterly tasteless. So at the end of the day, what you're going to get here is very much dependent on the sort of tomatoes that you use. Maybe I've made a mistake and gone with tins and jars and stuff. But the thought of kind of processing a whole load of actual fresh tomatoes, you know, you can do that if you want, if you've got the time and what have you. Right, salt. That's good. That's quite a bit there. Right. Now, once I've kind of salted this to my satisfaction and not decorated the white tiles with too much red soup, um, I'll put this into any number of containers. You get containers like this. If you buy a Chinese carry-out meal somewhere, it'll come in something like that. 
ideal for a portion of soup. Same with that, that's a kind of supermarket ready meal type thing. Plastic. Don't throw it out. A good soup portion. So we'll um we'll season this. Let me try that now, see if that's making any difference. Everything in red dots here. What's happening? And though it ne needs salt, I'll be honest and say that I didn't really detect the carizo there. All I detected was a kind of watery tomato flavour with a bit of cream in it. But the salt will often bring out uh, flavours that uh, you might not otherwise taste in the absence of salt. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Oh, that is a million times better. Oh wow, that's, that's, that's delicious. Oh my goodness, right. Well, it's coming to the boil, I'm going to switch it off. Put the lid on. Five minutes and we'll divvy it up into portions. That uh, salt's just brought the whole thing to life. It's actually absolutely stunning, taste-wise, yeah. Who'd have thought it? One lump or two. You want to get some of that chorizo in there in every portion. It's hard to know how many portions I'll get. It could be anything between six and eight. Some of that will be frozen for consumption at a later date. At this stage you'll probably do a lot of dribbling. That's another technical term. Put a lid on these right away. It helps us, the heat helps to sterilise things. Improves the keeping quality. Anyway, I think you get the picture. I'm just divvying this up. Probably three ladlefuls per portion, something like that. But I think it's time to actually give it one final taste. Where's my spoon? All right. That, that, that. The, the weather's going to be pretty dire for the next week. It's very wet, so I don't think I'm going to be able to get out and make any kind of outdoors videos, which is why I'm doing this. Hope it's kept you amused, giving you an idea to do stuff for yourself. Because at this time of year, as I say, things can feel a bit bleak, but when you've got a good bowl of soup, it's, um, it can make a heck of a difference. And tomato soup's got a way of kind of putting a wee bit of zing back in your life. Even when it's got lumps in it. But one final flavour, or taste rather. I hope you can see this bowl, can you? You can. Sort of, yeah. Oh my god, that's a success story. Right there. Wow. 
That's absolutely delicious. When you make your own soup, it doesn't always work out, but my God, that is a winner. I'm Eddie Burns. Take care, and I'll see you again.